Gentlemen, how are we, ladies and gentlemen, listeners? Welcome to the Leg Up Australia podcast. What do you think? Yeah. You ready? Ready. The big yeah. debut. God, he's nervous. <laughs> oh, very. Very nervous. <laughs> Hello, punters, and welcome. Welcome back. The OG podcast is back. The original podcast, the Leg Up podcast. Ken, but this is the one that got us to number one on Apple. Who am I? Uh, Pat, Hildo, Orgy? I wouldn't want to associate myself <laughs> with any of those blokes. We have Adam Campton joining us in the studio. Uh, Blake Johnson is here with us, Nick Lloyd, and I'm Sam Wood, and welcome to The Revival. We gave, we're giving the punters what they want. We are reviving the OG podcast, the Leg Up Australia podcast. Welcome. Uh, how are you, Blake? Yeah, I'm going good. It's good to have Campo here. Isn't it? Yeah. I, can't, I, I cannot believe how nervous he is. <gasps> oh, so nervous. He's so nervous. He just... Whispers too, which is great. He's, he's worn gone, his. He's if anyone watching, the, uh, if anyone watching, he's gone the. He's worn his lucky Crocs for, for episode he's one. Gone the white Crocs all up the white Zach Purton jumper. No good. Oh, is that a Zach Purton jumper? Looks yeah, good. That's flash. Yeah, get him over Life's for the remote. What's he doing? He's just riding winners, I guess. Yeah, riding yeah. quaddies. Riding quaddies. Yeah, goes oh, right. Goes right. I need to give caper. you a little bit. What did yeah, he he's ride not the last too bad. five the other night. Uh, the last four. Last four, and then one early. So um, I was actually on holidays with him that week. And um, where'd you go? What'd you do? Where'd went you to do? Thailand. Did you? I went there for five days. And um, you have a pad thai. I had a few. Yeah, a couple of bad times. I got burnt. We had a few drinks. Did you get I... any Thai belly or anything like that? No, no, it was good. We stayed in a nice joint. And what beer did you drink? Um, Singer? A, a few different ones, I think. Um, did you just have it? Was it a big, was it a goat? Because Zach doesn't mind a party, does he? Um, he he's had his fair share of beers. And um, he actually, to be fair, he, you, you can understand why he's very professional. He, uh, he went for a beach run while we were sort of... <laughs> Sinking beers and uh, cocktails, but um, no, he. I think by Thursday or Friday, he sort of started realising the weight needed to come back in check, and he um, he worked hard and shows how professional he is. He got there on Sunday and rode five winners. So <laughs> I was, um, What'd you do on Sunday? I flew home. <laughs> <laughs> no beach run under the belt or anything uh, like that. No, nah, I left the fitness for when I got back. So yeah, um, mate. It's a you're it's a summer guy. fitness guy, yeah, anyway. for sure. For sure. <laughs> fitness guy. Uh, so we're very very excited to have Campo on the show, uh, and Nick, you're joining us. This is. This is your variety style racing <coughs> podcast, something you're probably a bit used to over at Mugs Punting when you're doing your stuff like that. A little bit more relaxed. Yeah. A little bit of, I suppose, a bit of shit talk. A yeah. A bit of, try and inform a little bit. We, we can try and make people smarter by listening, whether or not that'll happen. Relax, <laughs> funny, banter, all categories that you excel in, Blake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Intelligence. <laughs> he's well, the, we're paying him per word. Yeah, yeah, he's he's on a very short quota. Man of a few words. Yeah, he is. I am. He is. Now wait till wait till we'll get him fired up. When we'll I speak, people up. listen. Yeah, we'll yeah. get him fired up. Maybe like we'll do a pride jersey thing later. But anyway, <laughs> we'll we'll get him fired up somehow. But it fantastic, fantastic news in the lead up to the first episode of the new potty, the old potty coming back. Peter Valandis headed over to the UK. Sir Peter Volandis. He was in the... I saw him in one of the convertible Rolls Royces. Like, the, the, as the king comes in, he was in one of them as well. And he was in one of the carriages too, wasn't he? Was he? Straight. Wow. Yeah. Oh. He, he, big weight over there. So he's gone over there. He's added... What, 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 what has he done exactly? He's obviously announced five million more for the Everest. Yep. And the King Charles III. Yep. Uh, group one. Yep, so a new Wait for Age Group 1 race worth $5 million on How's Everest it? Day. So I suppose it, it just strengthens that Everest sort of meeting as a, now, now a Group 1, obviously. You've got the Everest, you've got the Kosciuszko, uh, the Silver Eagle, I think, is another one on there. So plenty of money. A um, few disgruntled punters and industry participants, but I suppose it's... Um, when isn't there? <laughs> how, how, does it isn't just, there? how does it just get Group 1 status? Well, it was just the George Main. So, they so just, the George Main is now... The King Charles is now the, the third. King Charles the Third, right, yep. and okay. I think so. From from the way I can understand it, is that the George Main, which used to be two weeks into an Epsom, they've sort of re rebranded that. I think it's a Group Two, um, sixteen hundred meters still, um, to give those horses a stepping stone into the Epsom. But then by moving the George Main to Everest Day, you've got 
a couple of weeks after the Epsom to then go to this race. The four-year-olds have got two weeks into a Golden Eagle, or you can go to Melbourne for a Cox Plate. So, well, yeah. How, how many weeks out from the Cox Plate is the King Charles III? Is it two weeks out? Two weeks, it should be. Yeah. Well, that would be. A lot yeah. of people would be taking that path. Do you think? So it's so it's like Everest Day is on Caulfield Cup Day. No, not no this more? year. It used, yeah, correct. It used to be, but because because the Melbourne Cup, like the first Tuesday in November, is like the seventh or the sixth this year. That sort of Derby Day, it, it all gets pushed back a week. So Melbourne Carnival is a week later than what it usually is. So. So they're going to keep that? Because then it does probably attract more Cox Plate star horses. Well, it would, but if next year... If, like, it, I suppose the Melbourne Carnival just is based around that first Tuesday in November. So whenever that falls, that's how... Do a lot of people Cup. have their horses 100% wound up for that race now due to the prize money? And well, then they go... That's the other thing. Flatter it's into a Cox Plate. Yeah, and I don't know how many horses you, you lose from a Cox Correct, Plate. Yeah. Like, you would imagine a horse like Mr Brightside, he's won two Doncasters over the Randwick Mile... 2,000 metres of a Cox Plate probably saw him out, I reckon, 12 months ago or six months ago. He's probably going to be targeting the, the King, King Charles now. So what's the Cox Plate worth? Anyone know? Two million? No, I think it's five. Maybe five. five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's five. Like two hours, mile off. I'm, I'm working yeah. on 90s prize money. Yeah. Come on, Blake. Come on. <laughs> two million. Still counting. Uh, yeah. Five <laughs> I remember having two shillings on that winner last year. <laughs> and the... Golden Eagle is moved back one week. Is that right? Yep, so it's right? on Derby Day. So horses can back up from the Everest into the yeah. Golden Eagle. Yep, correct. Like okay. if you kick. Jeez, that's a good... It's pretty exciting uh, if you've got a good, good horse. Prize, it's going to be, yeah. Going for those races. Yeah, so the Golden Eagle's the 4th of November and the, the King Charles and the Everest is the 14th of October. We should get so. Diwali back. Yeah, so oh, I, I heard somebody say Where is that Diwali if Giga Kick wins... Both races, the Everest and the Golden Eagle, he'll be the, highest the second highest earner in history after like 13 starts or something like that. It's incredible. It's ins- insane, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm assuming, I'm happened, assuming so. Nature Strip's number one with an Everest <laughs> under his belt. Is that right? Or no, what? I think Winx is number one. Oh, yeah, of course. Winx is Nature Winx. Strip's Winx. number two at the moment. Yeah. Someone had <laughs> <Winx> <laughs> <Winx> <laughs> say, I remember that horse. You know, it's life-changing. It's not, not back five years ago now. You, Life mm. changes with Giga Kick. Yeah. yeah. 30 million. Yeah. Oh, it's life changing. What do trainers get? 10%. What do get? 10%. Mm. Yeah, that's life changing. It's a bit yeah. different to win the main at Kilcoy. Yeah. Well, well <laughs> have you got a Giga Kick in the stable? Yeah, at the I, I hope so. I hope Dupont can be so, a Giga Kick. So the Everest is probably worth 12 million to the winner? Depend. Well, it's 20 is million right? right now. 12 well, million. last year when it was 15 million prize money, I'm pretty sure it was 6.5 to the winner. Yeah. So be around. Oh, so a little bit Maybe less. Maybe say eight? Eight, nine? Yeah. So what that could be like if you have a horse, and also oh. keep in mind like the owners like winning an Everest, it's, there's a deal done. So it might yeah, be yeah, no doubt. So you're not getting the full. You the horse the is full winning whack. that prize money, but the owners aren't getting all of it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but that doesn't come out of the. The trainer's ten percent. The trainer still gets his ten percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Regardless, unless he negotiates. Unless he negotiates. Yeah. If you want to get to pour in, you might have to take five percent. Oh, and a ca- if it wins, cash <laughs> sling. <laughs> cash sling is. Well, you deal yeah. a lot in cash. Is that? Are we just saying that? No, no I'm just, I'm kidding. A, just kidding. Phone just kidding. card man. Just kidding. Yeah. No wallet. Um, yeah, so that's that's insane. That he, he is just he is he has got to be probably the best sports executive in Australia, Peter Valandis. Yeah, so like, TVL, insane. Yeah, that, incredible that, job. that is just crazy to get over there as well. <laughs> to and announce that he's built racing to be such a big sport now. See so many young people wanting to. Go to the races, and which is what we need. Mm. Yeah, see every day. It's like that's it, like a AFL grand final out yeah. there. Yeah, it's crazy. I, like I did like last year. I did every every group one day at Brisbane for the winter carnival, and like Stradbroke Day is always always big. But did Randwick for the first time on Everest Day last year, and it was like walking insane. into another planet. It was yep. insane. Like you couldn't move. Like I think they said forty thousand people there, and then they do Sweet Caroline. It's I it's know there's just, a lot of people that disagree with it, but. Times are changing. You have to change. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck in it's, the old times. An old argument, well, an ongoing argument is the, the Group 1 status for the Everest. Is it that important now? Like, really the, only, the only way I could see it maybe not being important is if suddenly Group 1's, like, a bit of shine is taken off Group 1's. But does it really matter? The, uh, Everest, not, is like a, the Everest is a different beast. It is, yeah. it is, isn't it? It's yeah. kind yeah, it of transcended that. that. We, saw yeah. with, we saw with Yes, 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 like, three-year-old Colt, 
usually like you'd think they need that black type or that group one win, but he's still got a mega stud deal for winning an Everest. So I, think I don't think knows. if they're looking and going, oh, he won an Everest, he didn't win, he didn't win the VRC Sprint Classic or something like that. Yeah, one like yep. they're not screwing their nose up like. People want an Everest winner. So well, everybody great. knows that the Everest is the sprinting championships of Australia, basically. Oh, like definitely, yeah. You're, you're basically yeah. the best sprinter in the yeah. country yeah. if you can like win Like the it. TJ Smith is the exact same conditions in the race in the autumn, but no one cares. But yeah. you get, yeah, you get that Everest worth $20 million, But And I think, like, even early days when – not even early days. Like, there, there was always, you know, Racing Victoria would have to react to what PVL was doing and things like that. I think they, like – They've stopped trying to take the fight to him, and they're just like, okay, we'll we'll have to move stuff around to make this work for Racing Victoria. And they're sitting there reducing prize money, and here he is kind of... But is there any concern that... Where's the money coming from? Because, like, my concern would be... So we've just gone through a big COVID period, mm -hmm. which racing absolutely boomed because... Mm. One it was one of sports. the only sports to continue going. Like, people were in lockdown. People were gambling more. There's yep. a lot more money in the industry. Yep. We're on our way out of that period now, and we're actually seeing wagering decrease. Mm. So, uh, is this prize money, are we, are we able to maintain it into the future? That would be my question. Like, it's con slightly concerning yeah. because, like, we're seeing all these taxes introduced – Punters aren't getting the best prices anymore. Like, we're, yeah. there's it looks more like things we're to probably bet going on. to be losing like promos with that new government sort of the recommendations that came out during the week, which is so not great because no. it, it, that, that promos that, keep people around a little yeah. bit more. I don't like, think lose that's going to be a concern. I think what they'll will end up the bookies will give them cash. They have to keep promos and things like that with it. Like if they lose bonus yeah. bets, they'll give but, them cash. Things like and and to answer your question, between now and next year, there's a lot of people turning eighteen. So I think that turnover is always going to be always propped be, yeah, yeah. by new punters. And it's so accessible. So That's accessible. Good. We, like Australia, mm. in the next 10, 15 years, yeah. like we're going, to, we're going to be facing a declining population. So there's not going to be as many punters. So Everyone, that's everyone's still going to always punt. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, so I, went, the I, went to the, I went to the confraternity shield on on Monday, so the the schoolboys footy, and sitting there watching a game, and there was a, a group of you know kids that would have been playing, so they're sixteen, seventeen year olds, and they're talking, you know, they're talking to one another, going, "Oh, like what price for for such and such to score a try here?" And I'm like, "These are like seventeen year old kids talking like about odds that." You would be betting on in, it's an, not, in an NRL game. Like I it don't doesn't think surprise me at it's all. It's not going anywhere. Like and that, that's what the new promo stuff is. And this is not a, a party about boogies, but that's what the new promo bands. Oh, sorry, the the advertising bands are going to change. You're not going to see three wide no cover sports bet shows. You're not going to see Ko Minis brought to you by yeah, Mad yeah. Rogues or anything like that. You you are going to see changes like that because of what you just said. But there's a whole host for the next three years of 18-year-olds that have come in that are just waiting to get sports bet accounts, get credit cards, get it going because – and that is what – and like you said, turnover is down, but it's only just back to pre-COVID numbers and that was still very, very strong numbers. Yeah, but pre-COVID numbers aren't like – they're not $20 million ex yeah. Everest yeah, numbers. On it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're in post-COVID prize money – but pre-COVID wagering numbers. numbers. Yeah, yeah, turnover. I don't know. Maybe there's... I don't know. Oh, he's a smarter yeah, man than me, be, but this that's is, a concern for yeah. me. Government funding or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I, was, I was just thinking, I'd probably just leave it up to him. He's just, <laughs> he just continues to deliver. Yeah. Seems to know what he's doing. Probably next yeah, I don't, year I don't doubt him like you, Blake. I'm not um, like that. Oh, that's, that's my concern. Is the money better spent elsewhere, though? Should, you know, we lost... What did we lose? We lost three... We lost five meetings in New South Wales this month and already one at Cowra next month in July or next week has already been transferred to another another track due to the facilities. Would we be better off pumping, what have we just put in, another $10 million worth of prize think money into... you're correct there. I go to some Curry. country meetings and I think there's a lot of money that needs to be put into some of those, definitely those country meetings from it, you know. Name a track that's just dog shit. Oh, then it's not really dog shit, but like there he is <laughs> somewhere like you know Grafton's got a you know somewhere like that you could keep boosting it to make it an even bigger and better track. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, they're, they're actual Moolumba. stand and facilities and things like that. Yeah, that need Moolumba, to be upgraded massively. There's more. Just yeah. they need. Well, you know, Gunda guy got five mil and was abandoned on Saturday. Shit. Tamworth, I think it was. It got another two mil overnight. Albury's been transferred. Um, Cowra got twenty mil in G- on June. If they, if they don't have drainage to though. handle five mil, yeah, correct. Yeah, there's a there's definitely a danger factor there. And the other thing too, like. I sort of only just popped into my head then, but we're talking about these big prize money races that PVL's putting on. You've got the big dance, you've got the little dance. I think they brought a new one called the Barn Dance as well, which is maybe on Everest Day as well. <laughs> as well. Like, but there's, there's so much square dance money. and the horses yeah. race yeah. in a square, just trying yeah. footy paddock. But you've got all of these races, you've got to win a country yeah. cup to get in. And the country cups are, you know, they're awful. Well, like the, not the races themselves, but some of these tracks. Yeah. You're trying to get these good horses to go to Tamworth, to go to Coffs Harbour. You want them racing on the best surfaces. Yeah. Definitely, I think the surfaces need to be fixed. And like it's 100%. also hard with owners. You try and convince them to take them there, and a lot of owners don't want them to go there. Yeah. So when they're offering that prize, mate, it's hard to you know, not go there. But I agree with you. I think there can be more money used for these tracks, definitely. Yeah. 100%. And a lot of those country tracks, there's a little bit like – a little bit of rain, they spit on the track, and then they get into the outside fence. Yeah, and it's shit racing. Yeah, like it's yeah, bad it's spectacles, hard to watch. bad for punters. Like oh, you have a bet in the morning, and you've you've drawn like you've drawn low, and there's just no chance. Yeah. Like it's annoying. Makes it tough. Yeah. Yep. Mind you, though, Randwick wasn't much better with the irrigation during the championships last year. Wasn't well, it? Like, I mean, like they copped a lot of rain, but the, the I mean, like, oh, oh, Randwick. Randwick is a bit of a shit fight when it rains. Yeah, but should we... You look at a track like Eagle Farm, though, they've just pumped all that money into it, the irrigation. Like, it could pour rain all week, and if you get a bit of sunlight on Friday and Saturday morning, it's, it's, it's a good fall. Yeah. Like, why isn't why isn't Randwick... I, I would say Randwick now is Australia's premier race track, like, with the, the races that they've got, but if it rains all week, it's gone. It, like, <laughs> it's it annoys cast. me, because there was that meeting there last... Was, it was either this year and... It rained on the Friday, but they didn't get much rain. It was like a good four, mm. and then they watered the track yeah. to keep it a good four, and then it rained then rain. on the Friday night, yeah. and it ended up a heavy eight or a heavy yeah. nine. That piss, like that pisses me off. What What do you think about tr- like going into a race meeting a good three? Is that a problem for certain horses? It depends on what but horses. Like for example, if you've got a horse that loves a rock hard track, you love a good three. Okay. So those horses are basically never going to get those tracks now because no. they want to go into the meetings Certain as a tracks, good floor. Especially in Queensland, you can you you know that those tracks are going to always be hard, so you can target. But I I know what you mean. Like that day, you got your race, you're ready to go on a good three with a horse that's ready to go. Next day, it's a heavy eight. You're a million to one. Well, even like yeah. like why why are we manipulating the tracks that much? I I get that. <clears throat> Like, we're never going to get a fast one or a fast two anymore. But why do we have to manipulate the track so that we kick off every meeting on a good four? I guess that's what a lot of people want. You're never going to make everyone... No one, not everyone's going to agree on it, but that's probably what the general consensus wants. How much um, input do you guys, like, as trainers, like, do you get much, like, with well, the Eagle Farm trainers? Like, you, you look at... You start doing the form for Doombin and you look out your window and it's blue sky, no rain forecast, and then on riser it's got soft five. It's like, well, hang on, how's this a soft five? Like, are they just watering the track all week to get get it a good four or that soft five with it's a bit like, of sting? Like, look, I think the BRC in Queensland, they do a good job. Um, hard for me to say anything at the moment because Gold Coast doesn't have turf, so... Yeah. Um, Polly's always good. Um, but... I think in a way you're always trying to protect your own horse and you want what's best yeah. for your own animal. So, you know, every trainer is going to be different, but um, I think they, you know, there's definitely times where they can be better and they need to obviously work together um, to come up with a better solution. Like we're very lucky it's a club now, Nivesh is there, who was did a great job in Sydney. Um, so, you know, he's, he's very easy to talk to. If you want to ask a question, he, he answers it, so... I think, yeah, working together and trying to come up with a solution. But back to you, Blake, I just think that's that's what people want and that's and probably a bit of old school, that's what they've always done. Do we sort off fast one, fast two? Because they're irrelevant now. What is fast one, fast two? It's a track rating. It's fast. So, fast. like, if you're saying, oh, it's a good three, fast one. Yes. Or is that like, or is it one, two, fa- three, fa- four? Is that fast one mm. is yeah. the firmest track in a right, heavy okay. 10 yeah, I didn't is know the that. softest track. Yeah, okay. But we don't 
We we uh, never see oh, fast I can, I can tracks in a metropolitan race. Yeah. Do they call it fast or is it? Do they go firm now? I think I've firm, seen. Yeah, but I firm, think might be firm. Yeah, animal welfare is such a big thing these days too. Like a lot of horses jar up or <coughs> something happens to them in these very rock hard tracks. Yeah. Um, and then there's of course horses that don't handle heavy tracks. So you know it's 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 just got to work with what's best for your horse and you know. I guess you've got to try and, and see what happens. I do agree with that, but I would say, like, like safety, like a good three, mm. your horse is much safer to race on a good three than a heavy eight or nine. Yeah, so, yeah. And we're seeing so. a lot more heavy eights and nines than good threes. So yeah. I, I think that they manipulate it too much. Like, Yeah, I agree. Uh, like, if, if you're going to get into the fast, we don't want fast I'm trying to think anymore. of a good sort of, like, after. analogy across, across other sports, but... You'd say I would say it's something like a referee having too much input in the game, like Ashley Klein. Yeah. Oh, I was the, I was just even thinking. <coughs> excuse me. Like, you've, if you've got a horse that wants that good three track, and they're watering the track all week, like why can't it? Shouldn't it be a little bit more sort of up to the trainer to go? All right, this horse, I know he's not going to go well at, at Eagle Farm because it's going to be rock hard. But this horse, like, I want to get it to a firm track. So you go, all right, we can pick this track at Eagle Farm. We'll go here or Bow Desert or something like that that's firm. But then they find out that they've been watering the track all week. It's a soft five. Like that's the hard thing because you nominate on a Monday. Yeah, and you're racing on a Saturday. There's a big difference between those five days. So yeah, um, yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to, it's hard to come up with a perfect solution, but I do agree. You, there can be a lot more done. Just maybe, get rid of turf tracks like, and just synthetic everywhere. Maybe it's like the NRL ground conditioners. So you got a, you got like an Adam Reynolds oh, yeah. great kicking game, you yep. know. You want you want just leave the turf a little bit longer so you mm. can pull them up in like the end goal, on, you know. Like, on the harder sand, not the soft sand. Yeah, you don't you don't want you don't want a firm no. track no. at bloody Seabar <laughs> Stadium. No, you don't. Because no. you, you don't it's, it's synthetic at Seabar yeah. something. It's a little bit <laughs> Two minutes of poly track. Too many restarts. I think it's a dedicated team, mate. You've got a team that you want the ball in play. You've got a fit, rock-hard team. Yeah. So the, the, the ground conditioner, Yeah. he leaves the, leaves the grass a little bit longer. a person? So the ball, that like the ball stays in play longer. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, so both. That, they that's my analogy. It's all good to know. It makes sense. Suncorp first... Was it Suncorp when they had that game and it like just... Dead set deteriorated with like half a game. That was magic Probably like round, magic round. Like sand pit or something, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because they, they they put a layer it's a of sand flood underneath zone yeah. where yeah. Suncorp is. Like if it floods the Brisbane River straight, like that's Suncorp. Well, it did when it, yeah. when we had the big floods yeah. in 07, I want to say. And this one la- oh, yeah, last year, flooded yeah, flooded, flooded, yeah, flooded. Yeah, recently. So I guess yeah. some tracks are probably a bit like that. Like I look at a racetrack. Like I was very lucky to work in Hong Kong, Happy Valley and Sha Tin. I've never seen tra- race tracks like them. The way they dry, the way they. Mm. Play fair at all times. It's it's incredible what they do, and I believe if they can somehow adapt that, <coughs> work together with them, and ask more questions, and I think we'd get um, better how, solutions over in here. In Hong Kong, how many track staff would there be oh. in comparison? Isn't there like crews of thousands? Not thousands, but there's a lot of people always working on the track. Like I used to walk home through Happy Valley from my office to home. Say some days at six o'clock at night, and there'd be people on the track just doing stuff, fixing it. They got little shovels like this big, like picking the perfect piece of grass, scissors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like they're incredible, and they work, they work tirelessly. Tirelessly, and I do believe there is a big difference between people in Australia and Hong Kong. People in Hong Kong have an incredible work ethic. I'm not saying that all people. In Australia Whoa, he's <laughs> knocking Aussies. <laughs> he's knocking Aussies. I'm saying a lot of young people these days. Don't want to work hard. Lazy bums. I agree. Yeah, and a lot of There's people. A sense of job oh, yeah. what? Did we say that? <laughs> yeah, I agree. So, and, you know, over there they work hard, and um, so we've got to pay our staff, our, our track staff, less and get more of them. Uh, no, I didn't say that. that. <laughs> more yeah, that, minimum wage. I don't know if you understand how that's going to work, <laughs> guys. I want you to work harder for less. <laughs> No, but and we're, we're going to bring more, more of you in. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's still going to work more. Have we got any? Tra- is there? There was a, some track work riders in the news. This week at Caulfield. Well, they weren't riders, but they were oh, sorry, track work, staff. track workers. Yeah. Um, and uh, keep talking while this is just – I had it ready. Talking about Suncorp Magic Round, they filled all the divots in um, with, like, the sand. Mm. Do you remember that meeting at Gundagai last year when they had to call it off because the track staff filled all the divots in with rocks? Like, <laughs> I do remember. Do you remember that. rocks on the track? That. Yes, I do remember that. What that do you mean, like, 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 like um, they filled it in with river like, pebbles or something like that? It was that. like 
they filled it in with some some type of dirt, but the dirt was like full of like rocks. My two cents for that, so that's very dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> that, so gravel's more dangerous than sand. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. That makes sense. Have oh. you seen this? Yeah. Well, so this will be up on the thing. So yeah. we're at Caulfield. This is this last Saturday? Yeah. So you've got <laughs> See this bloke here? Three blokes that So he's he's didn't... rolled out. He's actually jumped and one of the female yeah. jockeys is screaming at them to get off the track. Look at this guy. Madness. Like, can it's you lucky. imagine riding and, like... Yeah. Like, That's so dangerous. Like, how would they not know? I don't know. Miles they claim away. that they know. were working on the track. Oblivious. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know what? They're young blokes as well, and they've got noise-cancelling headphones in. They've got they AirPods. Should, they they walk around that. with AirPod in their ear all day, like you. They shouldn't, they shouldn't have that on the race course. Tending they're talking to people. He'll do <laughs> 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 Luke Hilton. So I was supposedly filling in divots under the inside rail, and then when they realised that the the horses were, they like couldn't near. hear him. Well, apparently not. Fortunately, this is the RaceNet article from Gilbert Gardiner. Fortunately, jockey Bo Merton and Tatum Bull, um, they were leading. They spotted them and and raised the alarm. So lucky for everyone. What oh, alarm would so been? lucky Get for everyone. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. would have been um, it would have, it would have, yeah, yeah. Imagine if they had run them over. Like, oh. what sort of what sort of carnage. pickle I, I would actually, we be in I think in I saw now. that. I don't know if it was in the RaceNet article or another one saying, like, they were, like, seconds away from racing being on the front page of every newspaper in, in Australia. In the world. Mm. In the world, probably, yeah, for yeah. the very worst reason. Yeah. Oh. Like, what are those three dudes doing out there? Like, what? It's true. Yeah. That it would have been catastrophic. Definitely. That would have shut down racing in Queensland to... Like in Melbourne, to there would have been some type of workers' comp, yeah. Um, investigation, maybe like, all unionized down there, and there'd be yeah. a memorial thing. It would be a huge, kind oh, of it'd be a pulse. massive issue. Um, <clears throat> yes, so let's that, that is a very good debate, the Everest thing, but I'm glad that it's it's getting juiced up. And I hope to see, being a royalist, I hope to see the king out here. I don't think it's going to be this year, it's going to be next year. Cool if he had a runner in it. Yeah. Well, he had his... He might have a runner in the Cup. Yeah. Melbourne Cup. What? Uh, I want to say his name is Desert Crown. It won, it won a race on night two of Royal Ascot, which we saw, I think, I'm trying to remember now, Cross Counter won the race the year that he came out and won the Cup. And there was another one, I don't think it was Dover Legend, but there was another one that might have run second or something like that that came out to a Cup and, and ran well, so... I Never thought you were going to say that horse that um, he's got with Chris Waller. <laughs> well, what? What's his oh. name? Um, it won a race. It won like the Australia Day Cup or did, something like where that. Where it took off from a long way, a long way Regan from home. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then it went yeah. to the Adelaide Cup. Yeah, I don't remember its name. Um, it'll come to me. Races in the tartan silks. I'll find it. They're good silks. What are they? Just, that's the king's colours. The yeah, red, they're red, red with purple, purple sleeves. Oh yeah, and then yeah, they yeah. Got yeah. The gold, gold. It's got like the frizzles. Yeah, yeah, it's like what's meant to be like what on the front of the guards, hey, like yeah, yeah, rope yeah. or yep. something. Yep. Chalk stream, chalk stream. Yeah, yeah. Chalk stream. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I hope, you I know get, what would be great? He'd like, be on a Melbourne Cup campaign for sure. But oh, he would be out of sight. He'd have to, he'd have to win a race like an exempt from ballot race mm. to get into the race. But probably, surely he'd be on it. It would be great if we get the king on the potty. <laughs> We're gonna have to get a fifth mic, or one of us will share with him. But he would I mean, he'd get his own, I suppose. I wonder if he's ever been to the Gold Coast. He'd love it here. He probably would. <laughs> he'd love it here. How can you not love the coast? He'd be a big fan. It's true. How are you finding the weather up here? The winter's weird, hey. So it was weird this morning. What, I was cold this morning, yeah. Three thirty oh. this morning. It was no, it was hot. It was hot. hot. Yeah. And then it's it cold just when I got <laughs> here though. All of a sudden hot. it just got cool and then it was like tw- now it's warm. It was like twenty six degrees on Sunday. And then yeah, last night was boiling. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's strange. Very odd. It's bizarre. Mm. It's a good spot though. Great spot. Um, now, obviously, the gift that keeps on giving, especially if you're a racing variety show, Jamie Carr and her friends. She has to choose better friends. Definitely. What? Talk me through what so, happens. <laughs> so. Young kids do drugs and they snort them up their nose. Oh, yeah? They call it racking up. Okay. And or the Daily Telegraph <laughs> journalists yeah, call the, it yeah, racking yeah, up. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so basically an article got released, like literally, and I'm a Jamie fan. I've gone into bat for her previously. Uh, and I'm not saying, hey, 
do drugs. She did the wrong thing and it was stupid. But like literally days after she announced she's come back from a horrible injury, she's back riding track work, an article gets released. And I, I, I'd love to know, because a lot of, if you guys ever read articles online and things like that, down the bottom it will say where the article was originally from. And I think this originated like from The Sun or somewhere, maybe one of the UK papers, because they also pay the most money for these photos. And a photo like that... That's what I was going to say. How, how do they get that? A disgruntled friend or a jealous friend? It, it's mm. usually a friend that needs money. It's oh. st- like a, a, a picture like that could have... They could have paid 20000 for it. Yeah, but... Well. Oh, yeah, but, like, it might be... It might not come from somebody who was actually in that situation. No, I think a lot of them not. So people put those photos into WhatsApp and then someone in there is a... Little like you know a hustler and goes actually I could I'm going to send this to <clears throat> Channel Seven or and and a lot of times it'll get shopped around and the biggest price. So will... if you don't have if you didn't take the photo, like do you have ownership over it? There's no rights. There's no rights if it goes if it's circulated in WhatsApps and things like that. You whoever put that photo in there, but she can she could go down, you know, defamation. Um, cases, she could go down, you know, breach of privacy and things like that. But at the end of the day, she had someone in her camp or her friendship circle that took a photo of her in a bad position. And it's a, there's a, there is a stretch there. And if I was a sports manager, my motto would be deny, deny, deny. Because the only thing they've got le- like grouping her up is an arm. Yeah. Racking up a line, and it's the same jumper or a same similar jumper, jumper the to same her. nails. I mean, it, it's her, but you don't know, don't know. There's no three face. people were in that jumper that night. Maybe she was just doing the racking. Yeah, that's true. Maybe she yeah. just likes she's like OCD, OCD, and, just wants and wanted it straight. The lines perfect. She could have helped him out. Obviously, just the rule is don't do drugs. The rule is don't do drugs. Yes, yeah. that's number one. But number also, one, the second drink. Like at the second same time, drink. like someone in her, like with her profile, like. Surely you'd be a little bit more aware. Like I'm, like I'm not saying like it's it's an issue with it's young people in gen, in Everyone general just... with that sort of stuff. But the like, like it's a standard thing on a Saturday night after a race day. Like to what? Well, party like that. Sk- Nick, <laughs> Nick. <laughs> please don't say. Kempo, you know. Kempo, you know. I haven't seen any. You know, if one does drugs no. after a Saturday, no, but Nick, I don't think you can say that. Young people do. <laughs> Straight him off now. But no, they part. If you're Jamie Carr with that profile, you'd be a little bit smarter about How it. How old is Jamie Carr? Oh, she'd be 24, 25, no, wouldn't she? I think so. But she. I think she'd be at least that. Yeah, I, I think, think so. She's I think she'd be a bit older. older. But she's like. I don't. When these the guys have taken, sports management. She, she actually has sports management. When's she back riding? Well, she wanted to be back. She's riding back now. She wanted to be back before the season end to try and okay. win the Premiership. So she's a couple of wins clear of Blake, Sh- Blake Sheehan. He rode, I think, three on Saturday, four on Saturday. So tightened the gap a bit. But Obviously, you can do what you want. It's your life. Well, yeah. not like, illegal stuff. You don't, don't do don't, illegal stuff. You can do what yeah. you want. If you want to do illegal stuff, you're welcome to do illegal stuff. Not, it's not a good idea to do it. It's not a good idea for anyone to do it. But if you're in the spotlight... If you're a young person... Like you're going to try and do these things, and if you're you know, a young up and coming jockey or sports person or anyone that wants to have any, like, there's always going to be skeletons in the closet. Someone will always have photos of you, and this is especially for people on Snapchat and shit like that. That yeah. that just people, young blokes and girls, take photos now that they think oh, it's going to disappear in 15 seconds. It doesn't. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Shit just pops up, and everyone's you know, always got a phone in their hand. Yeah, and, and yeah. like it's not just you, you, you know, it's not just jockeys and sports people. If you want to have some sort of media career or be in politics or anything like that, this photos and stuff just don't disappear. But no, personally, but, uh, I don't uh, care what Jamie Carr does in her own life. I'm not going to no. lose sleep over that. Yeah, but there's a lot of people who care and are very jealous. Yeah, and therefore they're going to. Always try and bring down someone like the person who took the video. I just I don't even understand that. But that that, that, that was months ago. Yeah. Mm. That How could long have been... did Jamie get suspended for w- during the COVID the COVID party? Was it three months? No, three, it was longer than three three six, was Yeah, it? I think it was like six months. So like she's outed for that amount of time. Like 
that photo could have been from then, like, she's not riding, she's suspended. So it's like, well, really, what what impact does it have on yeah. anyone? If she's not if she's not, you know, racking up lines and doing coke all night and then getting on a horse on, on a Sunday, well, like that that's a different story. Yeah, if like the only way it does impact people is if photos like this come out. Because yeah. If you're a young girl that's, you know, you've got to think, there's a lot of young country girls out there that love their horse riding, take it really serious. They see Jamie Carr. She's beautiful. She's well-spoken. She's really good at what she does. And then you're like, oh, she's doing drugs. Like, you're dead. Uh, it's not a good look. Definitely. It's, it's like, no, you're in a privileged ambassador. position. Yeah. Like, it's yeah, not absolutely. just because you're in a privileged position. Like, nobody should do it. But, like, take a look at all that you have, like, and... Mm. By doing that sort of stuff, it could all go down the drain. Do people put as much, like, does it get as much press if it's a Celine Gaudry or a, or an Amy McLucas or someone like that? Like no, they definitely not. Assuming no. they're other female jockeys. Eh? I'm assuming they're other female yeah. jockeys. Yeah. So like, like, people you don't know. Yeah. But, Unless like, at the right, same time, yeah. they're still, like, I agree. No, young it. girls that There's are There's probably photos those. of them out there, but they're not getting 20000 for that photo <laughs> or... You know what I mean? Well, hopefully there's not. Yeah, hopefully there's not. No. That's... Well, more that. than likely there's not. Yeah. yeah. You said probably. That's the wrong word. Sorry, more than likely there's not. Sorry, ladies. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I just think, choose your friends. If you want to have a party, phone's away. And if you want to be... If you want to have that level of privilege, don't do drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Or do it by yourself in a room. Like, stop giving him excuses. He's like, <laughs> like, if you want to do stuff illegal, do it. But do it alone that's in why, a room. That's why Blake closes the doors up there sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's doing it by himself in the room. Not illegal no if you're by yourself. in there. It's true. Huh? <laughs> Just don't leave Riverside open. <laughs> um, all right, anything else to cover? I want oh, to show you a race call. Okay. But... Cole Hodges, he's a... How long has he been calling? Long before I was... Well, 50 born. years or something, I think. <laughs> born? Yeah. He would yeah. have been... I think he's been employed by Sky for like 50 years. So if you don't know who Cole Hodges is, he takes a lot of the, the country in New South Wales. That we've been talking about. Yeah, so what yeah. we're talking about with Everest prize money possibly going to these tracks, these are the tracks that Cole does. And Cole, he works his absolute guts out getting to these... Different tracks. He works his guts out getting to, um, you know, like what are we talking about? Gundagai, Canamble, stuff like Kankari, that. Really probably hard. Dubbo, uh, yeah. I think. Um, and he's not like, okay, do you want to just yeah. play this? I don't think you've seen this. No, I haven't. But this is blowing up on I Twitter. Just heard about it the other yeah. day. We need, so, have we got sound here? I've got sound on there, but I can. Let's give it a go. 12.56, late scratching, scratching, 12.56. And it's number seven snow missile, 12.56 p.m., uh, late scratching snow missile. Get that down the book and try and get back behind the binoculars before they let them go. So snow missile is the late. In fact, they're well underway now. And uh, going to... So they've got about five or six hundred metres. Yeah. So there's a call... <laughs> The call from the stewards, late scratching behind the behind at, the at gates. 12, and 12, 12.56. It's obviously not great, but the poor bloke's obviously doing his job answering what he has to do is answer the stewards. Yeah. He's answered to them. He's looked away and then... They've this one's them. on the stewards. They're golden. 100%. Yeah, definitely. Because if, if one of the stewards is on the, phone call, on the phone to the race caller and the starter lets them go... That's not the race caller's was fault. He actually That's not the race the caller's phone, fault. Was he on the phone when... They did jump, like the steward. From the run. vision, I, I thought he was. It sounds like he's still on the phone. I and thought I he's. I thought he's just making the announcement. Like, but when he said, "I've got to get back to the binoculars and whatnot," so he's obviously gone, stepped away, answered the phone. Well, he's not talking to himself though. And there's, but don't, could, don't they do it on the on the broadcast? Like, so yeah, they, they do. So bookmakers broadcast. You know, bookmakers rule line. Thanks, thanks, Jerry. And such then and such has come out at, at 12.56 p.m. so that they can get the well, deductions. Yeah, that's, yeah okay. But have they cast. called his mobile? And he's, no, or obviously they called no, the landline. Land yeah, land yeah, land yeah. I, I also took it as he had to do something official there. So he had to write it down or there's some sort of official note-taking or, or info-keeping that he has to do. He's not just saying that out aloud over and over again. And I feel that he's, he's not like just it. saying... I have to get back to the binoculars. Yeah, like, like why would he... Surely he's talking to someone there. Yeah. I think he... Do you want to hear it again? All right. Turn it down, touch, though. So we yeah, can yeah. blow these mics out. 
1256 light scratching, scratching 1256, and it's number 7 snow missile, 1256 p.m. Uh, light scratching snow missile. See, get down, the, get that down the book. So I don't think, got, I don't think he's got in. He'd probably be very old school too. Rule the line for his own book, yeah. then start approaching how he's going to well pull underway. The race. I still think, I still think it's, I still think it's the Stewart's fault. <laughs> and I'll just say, I he makes a lot of mistakes. Kyle. We stand with Cole. Well, Cole. a lot of times I don't stand with Cole. He gets, I yeah, yeah but this Cole one is not on, on Cole. Cole. This one is. Not on Cole. Put your binoculars Definitely. out for Cole. I feel so like, okay, Cole is. Are they gunning for him? They're after like on Twitter they were after him, mm. but Jeez, it, it, you're comparing him. Australia have probably across the board the best standard of caller mm. in the world. Like That's Hong Kong's got course. one caller. Like we've got a heap of callers yeah. that would not be out of place anywhere in the world. No. Yeah, but are they going to work as hard as what Cole does? Will you get the bloke showing up there every single race, man, like the way he does? He well, travels I'm just a saying long, that long way. Like Jumping in the car for five hours, yeah, yeah. four yeah. sitting there. I take my hat off to him. I, I really do. I think it's a tough job. Far out, it's a tough job. He'd be punching out 14 hour days. Easy. Like, if he's got to get to, like, say, a Wellington or he's, something he's like that. the guy. I remember when the floods were last year and he couldn't get somewhere and he somehow. Oh, I'm pretty sure I know he story. somehow. Yeah, got it, through the flood zone to call the race. He still made the effort to call the race. Yeah, he yeah, got, I think got, so. a, got on his tinny. He got a tinny. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> outstanding. Cole, I Cole, know the story, Cole is yeah, a there huge is a borrowed board jet ski bike. advocate, and he jet skied to Canamble, I think. Yeah, I think he... Um, now there was something to... There was something, <laughs> something along those lines. I think he swam. Oh, wow. <laughs> How old's Cole? No, he'd be, I don't know, 70s or something like uh, that. I think late 70s. We used to have a horse called <laughs> Me Astilio, and he used to just call it... Mysterio, like Ray Mysterio, he just go <laughs> Mysterio, and like we would listen to it. And it's like I'm not sure if he's talking about our horse or not. I've I've seen him bungle a few horses now. <laughs> oh. Like he's on the red. You he can't just pot him for that. There's some. Oh no doubt. Like I'm not. Pot, right. I'm not potting him. Oh, You've been some, hot today. I'm standing with Cole. He's off Cole. I'm standing with Cole. So you've potted, you potted PVL, Twitter, you're standing with Cole. The, I think you've got to choose your side better here. The people on Twitter <laughs> are comparing him to some of the best race callers in the world, and. Cole's doing a job. Like if we sack Cole and we get somebody else in there who's it could be a day where they don't show cleaner, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but is it going to drive wagering at Cunamble? Barbara from behind the bar to call the race if they don't show up. Well, we could get that girl from Twitter who was after Cole's job um, to go and give race calling a They're very, try. Very, yeah. a lot of people prefer to be angry than be informed. Hey, it's just Correct. so easy to be. What? Like on Twitter? <laughs> Angry? <laughs> oh, see, I'm not a Twitter guy or a TikTok guy. I'm not a social media guy at all, to be honest with you. But I thought everyone said, like, racing Twitter is, it's relentless, hey? Oh, yeah. Even the DM, some of the messages you get, it's... Oh, do you have any good ones? Yeah, there's some good ones, but... We used to do that, remember? I, when we get, I don't like, care Tommy what they say about like me. Yeah. I couldn't give two shits. Yeah. But when you bring a horse into it and say, I hope... Such as this happens yeah. to the horse, or I hope that happens to the jockey. You're a coward. You're a dog. Yeah. You shouldn't say things like that. Yeah. And they should be called out more often because I'll tell you what happens a lot of the time. People find out who they are, and the next minute they delete their Facebook, Instagram, yeah. Twitter, and well, they're not so tough. Sheridan yeah. Tomlinson recently, he got he yep. got one for a ride in Adelaide, and he and Shero, like, good on him. He, he screenshotted it, put it on his Facebook, and he goes, like, he said something along the lines of, I get these pretty regularly, but... This one, like, this has taken it too far. Like, I think he actually said it was not long after Dean Holland yep. Holland died. And oh. he, the comment was something along the lines of, like, I hope you do a Dean Holland or something like it's that. Horrible. Like, and just awful. So We had a he, guy, yeah. I had a horse in not long ago, and it unfortunately broke his leg. And the guy wrote in the comments, what happened to the horse? I hope it died. It died. <laughs> it actually did. Yeah. And so I screenshot it and put it on Twitter. And made it, next minute, he's deleted all his accounts yeah. and everything. Yeah. I don't want somebody to go and happen that guy. It's, I'm not that. But it yeah. might teach him a lesson to not go and do it mm. in life. Oh, yeah. We, we cop abuse, but we put tips out there and things like that on that. But, like, a lot of these people, they just don't think. Like, I remember one of our worst guys. He's – you go to his Facebook. He's an older guy. He had where he worked. Yeah. Like, like it, not his company, like, where he was an employee at. Like, I remember thinking, like, if he doesn't stop, I would just love to screenshot – all the abuse, like F yeah. and C's and that, and just saying, you've got a bloke working for you like this. I think you've got some pretty sad things going on in your own life if you've got to go Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, no doubt. It's like, it's like 
when you used to go to footy on a Sunday, like, and people used to say some pretty ordinary things from the grandstand oh, and yeah. stuff, like, mm. but it's it's on a, a, a it's on a more public scale than a, a Twitter DM. Yeah. So they're yeah, a little yeah, bit more ruthless in Twitter the, DMs. The keyboard, but it's the same oh. sort of blokes that are like, oh, break his leg. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Get up but these walls. days they're getting more and more called out. Yep. It's phones everywhere, like we are just saying. And yeah. it's probably a good thing because oh, absolutely. it's stopped pretty quickly once there's a few people. Well, like this, the bloke in, in Sharo's case, like it was, he, he disappeared. So I'd, I'd say a lot of people... Like the post it's went disgusting. viral, and I'd say a lot of people would have got into this bloke in yeah. in the DMs, found him, and and messaged him. But yeah, it, it wasn't long until his Facebook was deleted, and yep. no signs of him. And other jockeys even came out and said, "I've had messages from the same bloke." Same bloke. Like, yeah, good. Hopefully, boys. someone put one on his chin at You've the pub. You've never yeah. seen one come out. You can't say. <laughs> Why not? No, because we're we we condemning... Everyone makes mistakes, but you've never seen one of them come bad out. Bad acts, and then you're trying to sorry say for what I did. I didn't bad understand what it. Yeah. What's you know, yeah. listen, guys. If you if you're frustrated, don't get on social media to air it. Just be frustrated. Go have a beer, jump in the shower, have a Hillary Swank. Let the tension out <laughs> elsewhere. Don't abuse people. Be nice to everyone. Mm. It's karma. What do you do? The people, the people don't even believe karma. Uh, I know I, what he does. What takes I cocoa do? for a I was going to say, he used to take cocoa I, for a walk. Make her do the angry shit in the... Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Like, if I, like, I think, like, kicking the footy helps. Yeah, hoops. Boxing shooting bag hoops, or something. Et cetera, like that. No, we, I we try have... to kick the ball as hard as I possibly can. <laughs> you go foot? Oh, well, you know I can kick it hard. <laughs> <laughs> he was very kick-happy as a young footballer. Was he? Yeah, yeah. everything. Just kick everything. We did, a, we, did a, we did a season of TRL together and it was... Kick. Everything was kick. I yeah. wasn't kick, scared. Kick, yeah. I wasn't yeah. scared to kick on the first. Oh, there was a lot of kicking on the first. Your coach has told you once you were kick happy. Oh yeah, no doubt. He was kick happy. He loved Just it. Just a chip over the top. Yeah. When it played, up, when it played out. Oh, it that like one out of forty Joey times. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's it. Actually, we got so this is the crew we want to have in this podcast every week. We obviously have. Careers and a stable and everything to look after. So we will always have three of us, hopefully four of us. Uh, I was actually just thinking the other uh, yesterday, week after next, we've got Grafton Cup. Uh, so we're going to have any Grafton Cup. The Ramorny's on Wednesday. Wednesday. Yep. Is d going to the Ramorny? Yep. That's, that's his Give us an update on d So So just actually, for anyone that doesn't know d or this horse that's in Cambo Stable, it's getting a lot of... Attention He's right a now. jumbo jet. So what were we talking about? Like even the ratings and stuff. Yeah, we're talking there. about him being a, a group horse. Hopefully in time, yeah. He's obviously the most exciting horse in my under my care. Um, he's come a long way. He's always shown the ability that he's going to be a good horse. Um, Who used to have him? Uh, Richard and Michael Freeman. Um, he's probably, you know, grown. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> nah, Jeez. definitely not bagging him. He's, he's a horse No, no, no. Mature. Some horses no. just... He's matured. He's find their place. Probably loves Change Queensland. Um I don't train him very hard. He's kept fresh, and um, he's a he's an exciting horse. And hopefully, yeah, I, you know, I'm pretty confident going into the Ramorny after his last win. And since that run the other day, he was a horse last preparation that was a bit soft, even though he won four on the bounce. Um, but this preparation, he's more of a he's a, he knows he's a good horse now, and he's he's bigger, he's stronger. Um, and I'd like to see anything in the Ramorny ra- match it with him because I think he's pretty good. Like what sort of no. what sort of distance range? Of, like we've seen him at his best over, I suppose, a thousand and eleven hundred. From memory, off the top of my head, he won end of prep twelve hundred. Yep, spot on. He Is he? Won. You got no questions about him going twelve hundred, even like fourteen hundred or so? This preparation, yeah. um, third up. Obviously, the bit of a break between runs, three and a half weeks. You know, it's obviously a bit of a challenge. But he was always three weeks in between runs. Um, I don't think the 1200 is a query. He's just a horse that needs to get out the back, relax, flash home. I can't wait to see him in Melbourne if he gets his chance to get locked down the straight. I think he'd be an incredible straight horse um, just to have one last crack at them. But he's got an incredible turn of foot, which we'll say in off air, a turn of foot with good horses is such a big plus. It gets yep. him out of trouble. And um, I said p- before the Ipswich race, it didn't worry me if they went slow either because he picks them up so quickly. Like a horse like Golden 60, I'm not comparing him to Golden 60. But they all, you know, they try this and try that to beat him. Good horses find a way to win. And yep. I believe he's a good horse and he's got an electric turn of foot. So, um, you know, it's going to be a pretty good race. Like a horse like Far Too Easy going there. And he's he's a good horse. He's probably just short of the best. But um, 
got a good young rider in Kyle who's been booked to ride him. He's just ridden a Group One. Uh, he's ridden the horse before. Kylie, so <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. KWT. So it? if he let's let's say he wins wins the morning, nice and good. Uh, what's in Melbourne like an Ori Star? Yeah, yeah what, what sort of races options. we're looking at there's in the few. spring? A um, couple Moya. in Sydney that I'd like to get to, but no, <laughs> it just depends on how he goes next up. I, I really personally believe that if in Melbourne, if he got to a straight race, he'd be he'd be devastating. So is that it after the morning? Does he go to? He may go to Melbourne. Or I may just tip him out after that, give him a little freshen up, and then give him a whole prep in Melbourne where I can get him down there, get him to settle in. He's a bit, of, he's a real routine horse. He's he loves his routine. He we don't change much with him. He he's a good horse to do anything with. So um, he's happy, healthy, and in a good uh, frame of mind at the moment. So that's the way to keep him. But you know, see what he does after the morning. Hopefully, he shits in. Hopefully, he gives him the see you later. And yeah, hopefully, he shits in. I got good news for you. We're going to Melbourne for Melbourne Cup. Hopefully. Hopefully, they could be <laughs> first up in the Melbourne Cup. Well, I'm I've just never saying that if you spring. if you run if you run around that That'd derby cool. day time, we we might be there. How wicked would that be? Like all our content leading up to Melbourne Cup is following Deepor and what you're doing with him. Yeah, he's obviously becomes the people's horse. Yeah, he does. Do you, like just big picture sort of thing? Like on that topic, like you look at a Cup week. I'm trying. I can't remember the name of the race, but there's like there's a lower level sprint race on. Derby Day, yep. or there's the, of course, the champion sprint group one, wait for age. Like, yep. how, like, at this stage in his upward trajectory, what do you think is the more realistic target for him? Like, could you see him go group one, wait group for age? One, for sure. Yeah. He's only getting better, too, I believe. I think next preparation will be even better. Shannon's done a lot of work with him. He first up this preparation, we're obviously pretty keen on how he's going, putting him in a listed race, yep. which was so much out of his ratings. But um, if he keeps going in the upward spiral, I think he's. His turn of foot will take him a long way. I know it was only a class six dip switch, and plenty of people have told me that, but plenty of people told me before that, you know, he only won this space, he only beat those horses. I don't really care what he beats. It's mm. the way you do it. And good horses will continue to win races if they're, you know, they show up, they're happy, they're healthy, and I believe that's the way he's going. But he's got to go to the grafter now, and um, hopefully he can draw a nice barrier, get to the outside, and see his ladder. Oh, for the, for the they've all got to start somewhere though. Like for anyone that's sitting, oh, it's yeah. a class six, can't be. Yeah. They, they can start. They've got to start somewhere. He's made in it on debut at Sale. So yeah, yeah. For the punters that like deep or form, Ralphie who ran second, I think we made so him a horse weekend. to follow. Yep. Um, he flashed home over the eleven hundred. He's favourite in race three at the Sunshine Coast. What sort of race is it? Oh, jeez, it's, it's, it's a twelve. It's a twelve. Uh, it's the provincial provincial sprint final. Winter sprint. Yeah, that'd be a good race for him. Whether or not he runs twelve hundred, not sure. But okay. He's, he's, t- he's talented also. He goes good, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's yeah because I, I saw a tweet, I don't know yeah. anything about it, but I saw a tweet saying that he was racing well and truly out of his grade, that horse. Yep, so. yep. yep that, he was down the weights, but, mm. you yeah, know, it's good. It's good for racing. Good. Deep or form? Deep or form. Is there a Doom and 10,000 market for next year yet? Or? That's, that would be good. <laughs> that would be good. Don't have to go as far. <laughs> it is actually in the... I think he could be a Stradbroke horse in time. Wouldn't that be wicked? Like I do think he can run 14. Um, no, don't win too many group ones in springtime, man. No, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right, Blakey. <laughs> hit, and, hit and run. I'd hate to do that. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> what are we got? <laughs> I've got to carry 55 and a half in a Stradbroke. And I've only Actually, one of the owners sent me a message the other day. Ones. He's 200 to 1 to win the Everest. He's 100 to 1. Just wait. Just just oh, wait. okay. So he's, been, he's come in. I just had a bit there. Can you just... <laughs> Your account's flagged. <laughs> <laughs> just text us. Oh, just Everest. You know yeah. how I am. Yeah, just text Let us. Let us know. If you take the, the price we'll, we'll cut get him, for the... We'll get, like, we'll call up and get him in markets. We just need to know what markets to put him in. Can the leg up buy a slot? Well, not what's yet. the slot 600? No, not this year. Maybe next year. No, we haven't got... We, got, we haven't got... We might be able to get, like, Bonho offers his slot most years, doesn't he? Unless he's got something in it. Who do we, we know? We might have Who's that. Got he's the... got that good... Two year old. Two-year-old. I reckon it'll be going out over it further. We could go like it'll half leg up colours, half camp and racing colours. Yeah, that'd be They're cool. very similar. They are, yeah. Just throw a leg mm. up logo on there. Yeah. Put the and leg up logo on the blue and white. <laughs> the QR code. <laughs> Put the QR code on the, uh, on the back of the silk. And so, like, if you pause the Everest. Yeah. Oh, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah, we'll be do really like, really we'll get good. some cover up for this podcast. We'll chuck that on the back. Yep. It'll be the podcast horse. He pulls the podcast horse. Is right there? Now. You see, this is where like a race like the All Star Mile would be perfect if it, if there was a sprint version as well. Because yeah, like, yep. we'd get a lot of votes for Deepor in a race like that. But a mile. Like, Whoa! 
Surely, surely PVL's got one of them up his sleeve. Talk to Racing Queensland and get them yeah. to sort one out. Who's the Who's the Racing Queensland contact? Mm. Who's the Who's the big dick up here? The big cheese. You bloke, isn't is it Jason? Someone or yeah. Jason? Come on, Jason. Yeah, give get us a, a get a, vote. yeah, a voter's choice. Yeah. All right, beautiful boys. How do you think? Quick, quick synopsis of the first Good. party together. Good. Oh, Good. Great. Good. When we talk about the Broncos, they're going to win the comp. No, we don't. This is a racing podcast. We'll do a sports <laughs> one later. Well, just sports. wait. Just wait. Just wait. Okay. Wait, and we'll find out if Ben Hunt. Ben wait, what ticket have you got on Broncos to win the comp? You told me last time, and I've been trying to think oh, about I it. I think five to one or something. No, it's not. No, he's. I, I think they can win. I really do. They, they can win. The You've comp. got a stupid ticket on it. I, I agree know with that. you. I think Ben Hunt is the answer. They Definitely. If, if yeah. Ben Hunt's there, they can. Will he play nine? I think he has to. Yeah, yeah he'll play nine. Yeah. He can't 100%. change too much. Ezra's time. going good. He's going great. Yeah, he's an ex- he's that exciting, not elusive Benji, sort like of Benji Marshall yeah. when they won the comp. The Tigers. Well, he's you got that, that player. speed. He's he a good does. ball runner. Got a bit of spark yeah. about him. We've got to get a little turn of foot. We've got yeah, to get a little turn, super he's got, he's footy got corner. Deep yeah. <laughs> <laughs> turn of foot. That's right. Beautiful boys. Thank you very much, Cam. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Nick. Of course. Like, subscribe, comment, review punters. Let's get this podcast everywhere.